what does it mean to understand or to know? Are knowledge and understanding synonyms? Or are they different concepts altogether? Even more broadly, what does it mean to think? Knowing and understanding are obviously both mental activities, so what does the process of thinking ultimately entail? Here at the Rational Scientific Method, we are acutely aware that visualization is the key process that underlies all of our thoughts about reality. It is impossible to think about reality without first imagining forms or objects. Without objects to visualize, there is literally nothing to think about, nothing to analyze or understand, and nothing to study at all. So, I looked up the Proto-Indo-European root word for the verb to see, which is where visualization comes from. And I thought it was interesting to find that many languages use this verb as a root word for other derivative concepts. For example, in Doric Greek, woida means I know, which is all derived from the Proto-Indo-European root word of wide, which is to see. Common Celtic, wid, is to know. Widos is knowledge. In Iranian, vida is knowledge or information. In Sanskrit, veda means I know, which is where the name Vedas comes from which are the name of the ancient Hindu scriptures. In common, common Germanic, vit means to know, videt it means to see, and vest means news in Russian. So, not only did knowledge terms spawn from the idea of to see, vid, but so did concepts of information, and news. Now, some people think that a good explanation for this is just that the word I know means I have seen. But I disagree with this explanation. I think the more rational explanation is that knowledge is very commonly equated amongst most laymen, most common speakers, with understanding. We'll say, I know how that works, or I know what caused that. It's equated with understanding and used synonymously with understanding, which doesn't require you to see something directly. For instance, I can understand that the Earth travels around the sun instead of the sun traveling around the earth by just imagining it in my brain alone. I don't need to go outside of the atmosphere and look at earth from a distance and watch the earth travel around the sun. All I have to do is imagine it and I can understand how that's possible. So what I think that the connection of knowledge which really is to say understanding, and information, and news, the connection of those to the concept of to see indicates some intuitive grasp that we used to have on the dependency of thought upon the visualization of objects. Visualization is not just important, but 100% crucial, because this is the only way to communicate what is on your mind objectively. It reminds me of the story of the three blind men describing their experience of an elephant. Each blind man feels a different part of the object, and based on their verbal descriptions to each other, each blind man comes to a completely different conclusion about what the object is. However, if each of these blind men was presented the object as a whole, say, a miniature uh, scale model, 
instead of being allowed to feel only a small part of the elephant, then the confusion would be instantly resolved, because the entire entity could then be visualized, even to a blind man. Descriptions are only ever useful when referring to a physically present object. Only then can we unambiguously resolve the referent of the description. Without a model or an illustration to present the thing as we assume it really exists, descriptions are necessarily ambiguous. The only objective, clear, and consistent referent for language and descriptions and anything, any concept in uh, conceivable possibility is meaningful when referring to an object or set of objects and that we can visualize this beyond our words. That is what gives language meaning. Language is not tautological. Language uh, terms are not incessantly defined circularly with other terms. Terms ultimately resolve to images. They ultimately resolve to either pictures or movies that we imagine. There are dynamic concepts which refer to movies, static concepts which refer to single pictures, and what provides these words with meaning is the images that it conjures in our mind. All linguistic descriptions fall short without ultimately referring to visualizable objects. Many claim that math is the language of science. However, math is purely descriptive, and as I just explained, descriptions are always ambiguous without reference to a physical object that can be visualized. This is what makes a statement rational and objective, because its form, the formal referent, leaves no room for interpretation. But what about invisible objects that mediate phenomenon of reality? How do we visualize that which is invisible? The answer to this question is much simpler than you'd expect. The fact of the matter is that the term invisible, and other terms like it, such as undetectable or intangible, says absolutely nothing about the object in and of itself. Invisible, intangible, and so on are all concepts which relate the object in question to the human sensory system. It does not follow from that just because we cannot see the object with our eyes, it does not have form. Air is one example of an object that surrounds us at all times, yet it is, in, it is itself invisible. However, air does in fact have form whether we see it or not. Even atoms and the mediator of light itself, which could not possibly be seen by the eyes, must itself have form if it exists and performs actions in reality. Form is the intrinsic property of all objects which allows us to visualize them, no matter how small or big or far away or invisible they are to our eyes. This is the universal attribute of all things in existence that allows us to think to comprehend, to cognate, and to know. Every conceivable word in any language refers either to a form itself or a relationship between forms. Language allows us to think without fully visualizing, but it is only a shortcut. The underlying process which occurs during any thought, any idea, any conception, explanation, or description is visualization. Without forms to imagine and relate to each other, you literally have nothing to think about. Any statement, description, or explanation without ultimate reference to a form or forms is meaningless. 
the greatest breakthroughs in science have always been new movies of phenomenon to watch, with the objects involved being modeled in full form and detail. Germ theory, for one, is an example of how visualizing the relationships between human cells and bacteria cause disease. We conceptually shrink down to the size of the cell and imagine every line, curve, and detail of its architecture to understand how it works. That is the scientific method. However, during the 20th century, science has completely rejected these rational roots. They no longer seek a visualization of any physical phenomenon because they have equated their descriptions themselves with the referent of those descriptions. They describe the behavior of light, for instance, as waving, and then they convert that description, that verb, into the object itself. The underlying reality of phenomenon is made up of abstract concepts to the modern scientist. They have converted all objects into concepts, forgetting that concepts necessarily refer to a relationship between objects. Any concept necessarily invokes objects. So they have created a world full of formless objects, and in doing so, they have disconnected their theories and descriptions from reality. The underlying mechanisms that they allege to be responsible for mediating phenomena, such as waves, fields, charges, energy, etc., are ultimately abstract concepts. They have been reduced, they have reduced the subject matter of their, discup of their discussion to absolutely nothing at all. By converting their descriptions of the objects into the objects themselves, without presenting an objective model of the forms involved, they have missed the point of science and ultimately divorced themselves from the physical reality of the situation, that is, of the objects in relation. Without anything to visualize, without objective models, modern scientists have reverted to religiously studying nothing at all. However, many scientists will tell you straight to your face that there are some objects that cannot be visualized at all. They will refer to objects, proposed objects, like space-time, which they say is four-dimensional and therefore cannot be visualized or modeled in our petty three-dimensional world. However, it's an irrational belief to think that there are four-dimensional objects. The fourth dimension that they add is time. However, in physics, there are only three dimensions, length, width, and height. Since the term dimension, by definition, refers to an object's architecture and orientation, time refers to neither direction nor an object's architecture and has absolutely nothing to do with the shape of an object. So to say that an object is four-dimensional and therefore you cannot visualize it is an irrational belief. It's based on a false misconception of dimensions. They are trapped in a formless platonic realm of abstract concepts, without mediation by physical forms, and yet they still convert these abstract concepts into reified avatars or emoticons, like how the concept of love can be converted into a heart. The waving motion of an invisible object becomes a wave. The action at a distance named gravity and magnetism occurs in a certain area around an object, so they convert that area into the mechanism itself. You get the picture? They are stuck on descriptions without physical forms to reference objectively. And even worse, they've converted those abstract descriptions into the objects themselves and then try to convince you that it's your petty mind that cannot comprehend the invisible forms of reality. Instead of considering for a moment that they contradict themselves in the hypothesis of a formless body.